Um, John Wade Singhose, age 87. And could you spell your last name for the audience? Yes. S-I-N-G-H-O-S-E. What is the ethnic origin of this last name? Uh, Pennsylvania Dutch. Dutch? Pennsylvania Dutch. Pennsylvania there is a difference. Okay. So where were you born and when were you born? I was born May 18th, 1928 in Eden Valley. Eden, could you spell Eden. it? Eden, E-D-E-N. And Valley, V-A-L-E-Y. Right. Where? In Port Angeles? Nope. Eden Valley. Eden Valley in Washington. It's right here. Ah. You're in it. Right. And you were born on the year of Great Depression. Just before. Yeah. How was it? The Great Depression? Yeah, at the time that you were growing up. How was it? Oh, we, we didn't know we were poor. Everybody else was poor also. <laughs> and we raised our own food, you know. And we had cattle, and we had timber. So you had everything, actually. We were pretty good, yeah, so but no money. So that Great Depression didn't really affect your family? I don't think we ever got over it. We're still kind of tight, <laughs> kind of cheap. OK. <laughs> right, Chuck? True. So tell me about school that you went through. What high school did you graduate? I graduated from Crescent High School. Crescent? Yes. Uh -huh. When? Uh, 1940, uh, just a minute. May 23rd, uh -huh. 1947. And what did you do after that? I, uh, I went into the logging industry. Uh-huh. And I, Stayed there till I got drafted in the military, and uh, that was in 1950 when I was drafted. 1950? Yes. The Logging industry. Yes. And then what happened to you? When did you go to? You went to the war, right? Yes, but. We trained for a long time beforehand. So when did you dra did you enlist? No, no, I was drafted. Dra when was it? Uh, uh, okay, seventeen uh, November, nineteen fifty. Seventeen November, nineteen fifty. Yes. Drafted into what? Army? Army. Yeah. And what did you do? Did you where did you go to get the basic military training? Fort Warden, Washington. Warden? Yes. W O R D E N. Hmm. Uh huh. How was the basic military training? Mm, it was kinda tough. But we didn't we were kinda tough anyway. So we <laughs> By the way, did you know that there was a Korean War broke, break, broken out? We knew about it right from the very start. Mm. I had a cousin who was in the Air Force, and um, the word got out to us right away. Yeah. What did you think about it? Did you, did you think that, that you're going to be dragged into the war? I, I knew I eventually probably would go, yes. I had already had my physical and stuff in 1948. I had my physical, so, and I was classified 1A. Hmm. Did you know anything about Korea at the time? Uh, I knew a little bit from uh, high school history, world history. Oh, really? Yes. What did you learn? Um, under that, it was under the control of the Japanese at that time, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. you know, you're testing my mind here now. 
but I, I learned very little about it. Uh, I didn't know what kind of industry they had or anything mm. like that. I know lots more now. So how was the, what was your MOS? 1729. What is that? Combat Construction Foreman. Oh. So what kind of uh, work did you do? What did you learn from the basic training to be a 1729? Well, actually, that came later. The basic training was more you learned to be a rifleman and uh, infantry training. You know, the, mm -hmm. the front line infantry person. But then we, they, they started gi giving us our training for engineer training. So then later, what did you learn about this combat construction? Well, that was, uh, the training was pretty extensive. We had a, quite a bit at our own fort over here concerning that, but they sent uh, bunches of us back to Fort Belvoir, Virginia, the engineer center, and uh, we went through a course there four months long. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty, uh, well, let's see, that was pretty extensive training. We went to school 12 hours a day. What did you learn? Give me examples to the audience. Yes, we uh, did a lot of mathematics. And uh, we learned about uh, diesel engines, bulldozers, shovels, uh, uh, Cranes, earth moving equipment of all kinds, and explosives, demolitions. Wow. So we did a lot of that. It's like a very special job training, right? To, I think so. To, to become an engineer, right? Yes. There's one of my instructors right there. <laughs> wow. So it must have been a good, good opportunity for you to learn all those things, right? Oh, gosh, yes. Did you like it? I loved it. Yeah. So then, when did you leave for Korea? Uh, one February of 52. To from where to where? Uh, I left from Fort Warden to go to. Uh, Camp Stoneman, California. Mm -hmm. And then we went by ship to uh, Yokohama. Uh -huh. And then Yokohama to Incheon, Korea. Do you remember the day that you arrived there? In Incheon? It was about the third week. Uh, I couldn't give you the exact date, but the third week of February. 1952. 52. So tell me about the scene you saw in Incheon when you first arrived. For the first time, you are in Korea, right? Yes. Tell me about it. What, is, what was your impression? What did you see, actually? The first thing we noticed was the smell. The smell. They, uh, anyway, the, the town was demolished. There was only maybe two, three. What smell? Well, there was no sewage. Huh? The sewage was demolished. And it was just running down the streets, more or less. The, uh, there was, I think, two or three buildings left in the town uh, at that time. Uh, the rest, see, they had, the fighting had gone through there two different times previous to me getting there. But we, they loaded us on a truck. They kept us overnight, and we loaded on a train to uh, Chunchon in the eastern sector. We traveled at night. So what were you thinking? What did you say to yourself about Korea when you first arrived and you got this sewage smells and so on, all this destruction? What were you thinking, and what did you tell yourself? I said, oh, boy, we're in the war zone. <laughs> But uh, 
I don't remember anybody being scared, so to speak. It, uh, they said the fighting was about 15 miles uh, north of us at that time, hmm. uh, north of Incheon. What was your unit, 7th Division? No. No? 19th Group. Right. 185th Engineer Combat Battalion. Headquarters, Combat. headquarters company. And what division? Uh, no division. Uh, let's see, Tenth Corps. Tenth Corps. What was your rank? Staff Sergeant. How come? How, How come? come you promoted so quickly? You drafted in 1950. Oh, for you've been working as a two years in the United States, right? So you were step sergeant. Yes. I had just a, a year and a couple of months in, in the United States right, before right. I went to Korea. Yeah. So what did you do in Chuncheon? Tell me the details. In Chuncheon? Yeah. We spent the night there. Well, we got there during the night. It was all dark. Mm -hmm. And they put us in a tent there. And we we shivered our way through the night. It was cold, cold, cold. And uh, and the next morning they loaded us on trucks, and took us north up to uh, 19th Group, and, uh, and then they divided us up into different uh, battalions from there. So where did you go? Uh, Yangu, with does that name mean ring a bell? Oh yeah, absolutely. I was there. Oh, okay. Yangu is so hilly, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's very hilly. Tell me about it. Tell me the details. What did you do there? What was your routine? The specific, I mean, typical day. What did you do? Tell me. Uh, and uh, Yangu? Yes. We just spent one night there. <laughs> they loaded us on trucks and took us further north up to Wontong Ni. Ah. And... Uh, the fighting had gone through there not too long before that, but they had a small encampment there, and uh, w that's right where I stayed there for probably uh, about a month, or close to a month. I was running bulldozer mm. on a Route 58. There was a pass there, and they built this pass to shorten up the the uh, travel from the punch bowl to the Yangu, back and forth there. Saved many miles of driving. So you are building the road? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was solid rock. They dynamited the rock and then we pushed it over the side. How dangerous was it? Well, it was kind of dangerous, but we didn't pay much attention. We we were working out here in the mountains in the logging, you know, and we could look right, you know. It was, it was a little different. I wasn't used to working in that solid rock. But we had lots of explosives. There was no, expl no shortage of it. Were there any enemy attack while you were working on the road? Not right there, no, no. But I, I was only there about a month there, and then they, they moved me to another job. Where? Wachon Reservoir. Where? Wachon Reservoir. Wachon. Yeah. Are you familiar with that one? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we uh, had to hike in by overland to get there. They were building a tram road, a cable road up over this mountain, up one side and down the other. And uh, we were building a road from the end of the reservoir up to the uh, uh, end of the tram, the aerial tram road there. Mm -hmm. See, what we were doing, we were supplying ammunition to uh, the, the ROK uh, infantry. Mm -hmm. That was our job there. At so that time, we were about three miles behind the, the front lines there. 
And so you were like uh, building steps on the mountain, right? From the lake, right? We actually built a road up there. Road? So, so that uh, they could uh, drive their Nissan trucks up there. Up to the end of the tramway and then it went up over the hill. And they'd load this tram car with uh, ammunition, bring it over, and then they'd load it onto the trucks and then take it up to the front line on a little trail they had there. So you were operating bulldozers and stuff like that, right? I was running the bulldozers the whole time I was up there. Hmm. Yes. And what happened after that from Huachan? Did you move to other places? Yes. Let me see. Uh, we went over on to a place called Yangu Pass. That's between Yangu and uh, Quandary. What? Quandary. Quandary? Yes. Yeah. We, the pass went over the hill mountain there. And we went up there and we spent a, oh, a couple of months widening, widening that out, making a better road out of it. What else? But then uh, they sent me down to to uh, Tenth Corps headquarters. Where was it? Tenth Corps headquarters at Quandary, right? Uh huh. Right downtown Quandary. Uh huh. <laughs> but there was an airstrip there. It was a mile long. Five thousand two hundred eighty feet. Anyway, uh, it just had river rock on it that had been rolled down. Mm. So we put crushed rock on there. We brought in a rock crusher and we put crushed rock, and then we uh, we paved that. Would you believe? I I had no experience paving, but I learned in a hurry. That I was the foreman on that job. So you were in charge. In charge of the paving, yes. Mm. We had a lieutenant there, but he had just come from the states. And he didn't ever had any experience in construction. So guess what? He was always <laughs> following me around. <laughs> but that was good. Yeah. Because you are in charge. You are. You are. Yeah. He was in your in your influence, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Good. And I stayed right there on that airstrip, finishing it off, until time to come home. When did you leave Korea? October. A 52. It was toward the end of October. I couldn't give you the exact date. Yeah. I didn't have a calendar. But uh, they sent me up to uh, Camp Tripoli, which was just going entrance to the punch bowl for a few days there to turn in my equipment and get some other things to take home, you know. And, you know get. The... Uh, that, that was kind of a bad deal. Uh, I had to make a trip down to the airstrip there. To, they needed some help there with the uh, paver. And they wanted me to come down. Well, I went down and rode down with some other fellows and came back. I spent a few hours down there. And the next morning, the crew that I went down with I was getting ready to come home. I was come. In fact, that hour, I left that night to go to uh, back to the 19th group. And uh, that group of men that was going down was ambushed by a bunch of North Korean guerrillas. And they lost, uh, I think, uh, 12, 12 men out of that group. These guerrillas had tracer ammunition, and they set the gas tanks on fire of the, the trucks, the gas tanks hung down on the side there, you know, and they caught fire. Bad news. Bad news. So they, uh, I was just real lucky to be out of there. I never went to church, but we always, when I was up to the Wachon Reservoir, uh, every morning our lieutenant had us make a circle. We held hands. See, there was quite a few denominations there. And he held hands for a few seconds, and, and he said amen, and we went to work. 
Tell me about the details of the life there while you were there in Korea. Where did you sleep? What did you eat? I mean, you are the construction foreman, so that you must have built your own barracks very well, huh? Where did you sleep? I slept in a tent. Tent? Yes. <laughs> so I you slept. didn't build your home there? No, no, we built no homes. Come on. I slept in a tent for all the time I was there on a same folding cot. I kept it with me. Must have been so cold. Uh, I got a good down sleeping bag. And I had ended up with three of the wool blankets. And actually, I, I was warm, yeah. But that was very mountainous up there where we were. What about food? What did you eat? We were lucky. We had a, a cook with us the whole time. And he opened cans, and uh, we basically we lived out of cans. Very little. You mean sea ration or just? Uh, occasionally sea rations, yes. We carried those with us. Number ten cans. Are you familiar with number ten cans? No. They hold about a gallon, and that's where a lot of our food came in. Well, who was cook? American or Korean? Uh, we had an American cook with a Korean helper. Remember his name, Korean guy? Uh, yes, just a minute. Uh, uh, oh, God, it's kind of slip. Just, I'm having a little trouble remembering that. Kim Bu Khan. Wow, you remember whole name. Yes. How was he? He was a good man. He, he learned how to run bulldozer, too. And we had a young man staying with us. He was an orphan. And his name was Kim J. Koo. He mm -hmm. lived in Kim Chon City. But his whole family was killed there when the North Koreans came down and the Chinese. So what did you do to him? He was... Uh, he was just our helper. Houseboy, right? Houseboy, yes. I was close enough. Yeah. He did our laundry and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, Very good worker. Yeah, and we sent him off to school just before I left over there. We sent him, we, we took up a collection and we sent him back home to go to school. So tell me about it. When you left Korea, what did you think? Think about the future of Korea. What did you did, did you have any idea that how Korea would develop, or did you have any any thought about it? No, I had no idea what it was going to be like. Uh, it's unbelievable, really. I've seen a lot of pictures. I've talked to a lot of these folks that have been over there and visited. But uh, I know one thing that the uh, Korean people w were very industrious, good. Honest, hard workers. How did you know? They worked with us. We we had cook and oh, we had we had workers with us too. They worked on the road. Other workers. Pardon? Other workers than Kim Jae Gu and Kim Bu Gwan. Oh gosh, yes. We had lots of times like two dozen uh, workers with us there. Yeah, they were very dependable. So what were you thinking about you being there? I mean, you didn't know where Korea was, not much, right? No. And when you left Korea, you didn't really think about the future of Korea. You didn't have any idea. Now you're back in your home and looking at all those things happening in Korea. What do you think about whole things? Uh, I think it's very, a great thing they've done. They're a great industrial power. And I've talked with a lot of folks from Korea since then, and uh, I'm really impressed with them. I'm impressed with the country, I'm impressed with the people. What do you think, why, why do you think that we were able to pull this out? Well, I know they had help, you know, from the United States and 
Great Britain and other countries there. We had people from Turkey there, Ethiopia, Canada. The Canadians were very helpful also, you know, working with them, mm -hmm. with the Koreans. But, but despite such clear, uh, successful outcome out of the Korean War, right? Why do you think that this war, the Korean War, has been regarded as forgotten? Why? Well, actually, I, don't, I know a lot of people seem to have forgotten it, but a lot of us, we haven't forgotten it. Why? Now, I, when I'm with, visiting with Ray here, a lot of times we discuss what we did over there. What did you do there? What did I do? Yeah. Well, actually, I, I was a construction foreman, but I ran a bulldozer a good part of the time. I did demolition work, too. With the yeah, I mean, you told me all this detail of your job that mm -hmm. you did during the Korean War. Now, looking back all those years, what do you think you did for Korea? Well, we trained a lot of their people, for one thing. And uh, I'd always hoped to make contact with this Jim, Kim J. Gu. Uh -huh. Gu. Uh, I had his address there, and I had a... One of the fellows from the Korean embassy was going to see if he could look him up, but I never heard anything back. About what was the most difficult thing, the really it's something that you really hated when you were in Korea? What was it? The extreme weather, probably. But we had clothing and what have you. We, we were good. But I think the weather was probably the worst. But the other, we worked with other units, Marine Corps and uh, the Turkish people. Uh, I didn't work with Ethiopians, but Ray did. Uh, no, uh, I thought it was kind of good to we were able, and I worked with the Canadians too. And it, it was good to work with those other people. It was a good learning experience. What do you want to say to Korean people now? Is there any message that you want to convey? Uh, I would like to congratulate them on the great job they did of rebuilding the country, the road networks they put in. The roads that we put in were more or less just trails, you know. But uh, I, I think that... Uh, They've done a great job there. I would be the first to tell them that. I've told a lot of the folks from the Korean embassy that we met with from time to time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't regret your service there? Oh, no. Not at all. Mm. No. I learned a lot. What do you want to say to young Americans who doesn't know about the Korean War at all? Uh, I would suggest uh, reading some history on Korea. I don't have any particular books myself, but uh, yeah, I, th I think they uh, they could learn a little bit about the country and the advancements. I we, we have some pictures and what have you. The publications have come out with a lot of the the. Uh, improvements that they've done in Korea and uh, one of them is Incheon. When I left Incheon, the only thing left standing was the bank bolt. There were three bridges across there at one time. They were all gone. We had a pontoon bridge across the Soyang Gang River that our unit put in. Uh, now they tell me there's three universities in that city. Mm -hmm. So that's a real accomplishment there. Were there any dangerous moments that you were, might have been wounded or killed? Well, that danger was always there. Tell me example, occasions where you were almost wounded or anything like that. One night, they sent me out with a bulldozer to uh, plow snow off the road. 
And uh, I hadn't been there too awfully long. They sent a young man with me, there's a guard. I, first thing I looked over there, the, the dozer had seats for two. I looked over there and he sound asleep. <laughs> but anyway, I just let him sleep. Mm. But w we were out there all by ourselves at night, snowing. We didn't know. We were in a pretty wild country. There were no units around there or anything. But we could have been attacked at any time. And, but nobody showed up in that snow. I was just a little nervous. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I recuperated from that in a hurry. Thank you for this interview, John. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to do it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.